consider this your crash course in how to not suck at a fairway bunkers. And then a part two on the back end of this, so stay with me, is gonna be how to turn them into a strength. Let's go. Okay, part one, crash course, how to suck less out of the bunker. When we get into a fairway bunker, clearly we have to treat it like objective number one. Let's get it out. Even if it means that it doesn't get to the green. So in this situation, I'm pretty far back from the lip. Got four yards, five yards back from the lip. The lip's probably four and a half feet elevated above the level the ball's sitting on. I've got 155 yards to the pin. I have 135 to the front edge of the green. 155 yards would be typically an eight iron. So the first part about assessing what you're capable of doing here, I'm far enough back that I can hit an eight iron out and clear the lip. How do I know that? Well, the experience tells me that. How can I upskill your experience or your knowledge that tells you what club you could get out of the bunker, which is the first step in evaluating what club you should take as your inner bunker? Follows the following rule, evaluating what club to use. Like I said, 135 front, 155 hole. So a nine iron's gonna get me to the front of the green at 135, an eight iron should get me to the pin at 155. But the wind's kicking up now, so it might be a seven iron if I wanna get adventurous and try and push it all the way to the pin. How can you know which one of these is gonna give you the greatest probability of success getting out? Well, clearly it's gonna be the nine iron, right? But there's a little trick that we can perform in practice clearly, because you're not allowed to lay your club down in a bunker, right? No touching the surface, is if you stand on the club head, it's gonna give you a projection on how much loft or how much launch the static loft of the club could produce. So what we've got, we've got a nine iron. It's got 42 degrees of loft on it. That shaft is now 42 degrees to the ground. So clearly as I look out, I see the grip well above the lip of the bunker. Let's jump to the third of my options here, just in case the wind's gusting up. Stand on that club head. This seven iron has 34 degrees of loft on it. That's gonna be close. I could probably get a seven iron out still. Now, if I'm closer to the lip, as if I'm turning 45 degrees and going this direction. So rather than playing towards the pin, let's say the green's that direction. I've still got 135, I've got 155 hole, and now it's even more into the wind. What if my choice was seven iron here? Does the seven iron give me enough loft to get over the lip? It's borderline. Now the ball's not gonna launch on the true loft on 34 degrees here. It's gonna always launch a little bit lower than that. So this works as a rule of thumb that you can use in your practice out of fairway bunkers with the assumption that you're gonna fit in some practice out of a fairway bunker, that then serves as, okay, this is the max launch I could possibly achieve. I need to visualize it launching five degrees lower than this. And five degrees lower than this is pretty close to that lip. I'm gonna hit a ball in this direction, give it a shot with a seven iron and see what happens. And sure enough, it only cleared the lip by maybe eight inches, maybe 10 inches. So that's borderline and that's risky. And that's a risk I don't suggest you take if our objective is to number one, get it out, to suck less out of bunkers, to avoid turning these situations into doubles or triples. So step one is an evaluation of what club to use for a given distance away from your lip and a different given height of the lip. Always choose a club that gives you more probability of success even if it means that you're short of the green or on front of your green rather than pushing it all the way to the pin using this rule of thumb. Now, when you're out in the field and you're relatively close to a lip, you can just simply, outside the bunker, step on the club of choice, step on the club of choice, and make that evaluation. If you've got three choices, okay, seven iron's relatively low, does it look like it's gonna clear this lip? Maybe, maybe not, right? So the same rules can be applied in the field of play, so to speak, on the course to where you're making the right choice. Let's get down to some of the techniques that are gonna help you suck less. Mission critical out of the fairway bunker is making contact with a golf ball before you touch any sand. Is it normal to touch sand? Absolutely normal. How can we the stack of the deck in our favor of catching the golf ball before we get to the sand such that we make good contact and get the ball out? Simple modifications to make. The first is ball position. So if I stood to this as if I was standing on fairway grass, driving range, that's where my ball position is gonna be placed. It's at the front end of the middle of my stance, sternum, just underneath my left eye. The modif modification I'm gonna make in a bunker, in a fairway bunker, is gonna be to move it back one full ball position. So now, 
It's right on the right side of my nose. It's a little bit to the right of my sternum. And I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure onto my lead side. Both of those modifications ensure that I'm moving the potential for the arc to be a little bit further to the left of where the golf ball is. So I'm gonna catch that golf ball a little closer to this back pencil here. So the arc itself is further away from the ground, adjacent to this back pencil. And therefore, again, going back to the core concept of contact, I increase the probability of catching ball before turf. So that would be the first and most primary. It's weight position, and it's also ball position. Finally, the sand is an unstable surface and it requires us to do something with our feet to reduce any chance of slippage. The slippage that typically occurs in a, is in a toe and heel direction right as the golfer is in transition, right as they're hitting the gas out of the top of the swing with their pelvis, with their rib cage, they're starting to transition and turn to create energy towards the target to get this ball to travel a certain distance. Typically that back foot slips out from beneath them because the surface is unstable. So traditionally, you would get taught, well, build a base for your feet just by digging your feet into the ground. That serves no other purpose, and it's a good purpose, but no other purpose other than to give you a firm foundation for less slippage. But in addition to this, I also want you to dig your trail toe into the ground to where it feels like your heel's a little bit more up in the air and you've got greater purchase to avoid that back foot slipping back out from underneath you. These two things add a dress, which is balance on the lead side, maybe 20% more pressure on the lead side, ball position just behind, right center, and then making your normal golf swing should produce a greater probability, like I did on that shot, of making contact ball before turf. When I say greater probability, it doesn't guarantee certainty, but there's a skill drill that we can add to your practice that heightens that level of certainty of good contact. Let me show you that right now. As I was mentioning, mission critical in terms of uh, not sucking out of fairway bunkers is getting out, which means you gotta select the right club based on the distance away and the severity of the lip in front of you, but also control where that arc starts interacting with the golf ball slash the sand. And so the skill drill that I'm talking about is a drill called elevator, and it's gonna teach you to learn to modify the height of the arc relative to whatever it is you're trying to strike. And so elevated, we think of this first tee placed in the sand that's one finger above the level of the sand as the first floor. We think of the tee that's placed at the level of the sand as the ground floor. And then this third tee I've pushed down into the sand, if I covered it up, it's probably one finger below the level of the sand, but I'm gonna expose it so you can see it. That's the basement. So we got first, we got ground, and we've got basement. And the simple exercise that you're gonna put into practice here is making practice swings from the same stance, from that same ball position and pressure adjustment, regulating or controlling that you can return the arc of the club high enough such that you're touching the tee, not touching the sand, low enough such that you're touching the sand and the tee at the same time, simultaneous, and then deep enough such that you're able to get down into the sand more like a regular bunker shot. The last one is only so we bracket the experience of a little higher, optimal, and then a little too low. The Goldilocks effect, if you will. Now you're ready to graduate to a golf ball after demonstrating success at being able to regulate that arc height ever so slightly so you have confidence that you can catch the portion of the ball that you're attempting to catch. Whew, beautiful shot. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay.